Hello, Cancer viewers. So I'm going to pull some cards, whatever the story is. Um, my past, present, future might be a new person, an old person, might be about love, money, psychic awakening. It's just whatever the cards want to say. We have a risk, reward, bold gesture, choosing love over fear. We have clubs, parties, and social life. Spying. Listening and understanding, new perspective. True love and abundance now flows to you naturally and effortlessly as a result of your open-mindedness, faith, and bravery. Apology and regret. Confusion and uncertainty. I feel like you're going to get an apology from someone that has a new perspective. Um, I feel like they expected you to chase them and you didn't and you're kind of living your best life and they did not see that coming. And so now they want to, they want to apologize to you, but you might be kind of confused and uncertain about it because you are kind of living your best life. Like, I think at first you were just trying to like distract yourself from them and now you're actually just focusing on like other things. So you're going to, you're going to kind of question when this comes in, I feel like you're going to question if you want to go back to this. I feel like some of you have a new person or you're, you might be like sleeping with other people or, um, just flirting or just, you know, opening yourself up to other people, basically. So I feel like this person, I get like a sense of anxiety channeling this person where it's almost like, so we have risk, reward, bold gesture, choosing love over fear. So it's like this person has a new perspective. I feel like maybe either they were drinking a lot or doing drugs or you were, or there might be like parties, like something with like clubs or parties or like social events, like you guys met at a social event or a party. Or maybe they're watching you and it's like you're going out and being social and living your best life and having fun. Because um, it just seems like they're spying or like this is what they think. I don't know if you're doing it or not, but this is what they think. It's like they're spying on you and they, whether this is reality or not, I'm not sure. But in their head, they feel that you're going out and living your best life and being social and maybe having sex with other people. Maybe you've met someone new. Maybe you're dating casually, like dating other people. Um, I'm just getting this sense, like maybe you tried to make them jealous on social media and it's working. Or maybe like mutual friends said that they saw you out with somebody new. Like that kind of energy. I'm just getting the energy that this person's like kind of watching you and they just feel like you have somebody else. Like they feel like, they feel like you're not waiting for them. I just get the sense that like this person thought that you would chase them or that you would wait for them because I get like an anxiety I get like a sense of urgency where like you switched it up on them maybe this is somebody that you've been on and off with for a while like you know every once in a while you guys get back together and then you break up and you, you're out of contact for a long period of time this time around is what I'm getting is that you did things differently like you let this person go this time you didn't fight for them you didn't beg them to stay you you just focused on yourself this time. You said, screw it, you know. This might be someone that kind of played mind games with you and tried to keep, you know, keep you in this cycle, like a narcissist or someone that just tried to keep you in this cycle with them, kind of keep you hooked on them. But this time around, you're like, you know what, no. I'm going to go have fun. I'm going to live my best life. Or like I said, this could be just what they think. Like you might not even be being social right now, but in their head, they think that you're being social and they think that you're sleeping with somebody else and that you're talking to somebody else. So they're very jealous and that's the sense of urgency is that what I'm getting. Like they just feel like they have to come in quickly with this new energy. They have to choose love over fear. It's just like someone's lit like a fire under their ass. They feel like they got to come in quick. They might apologize to you, but you might be confused and uncertain. There might also be um, a soul contract with this person that you guys need to wrap up. It's also possible that you did a binding spell on them and that's why they keep coming back around. Like... That energy needs to be like, they need to be cut and cleared or this energy needs to be, it, this energy just, just needs to be cleared possibly if you don't want this person anymore. Because it almost just seems like a cycle, like a karmic cycle, like they keep coming back around, like you guys just can't get over each other for too long. You know, even if years go by without talking, it's like sooner or later this person pops back up. And um, they might be blocking you from new love to an extent. Like I said, some of you did a binding spell and you need to undo that binding spell because... 
this isn't real love. This person is coming back because they're bound to you or because there's a soul contract, like a karmic cycle that you guys haven't wrapped up. Or possibly you guys just never had a closure with each other. Like it was never, they were never willing to give you closure or you weren't willing to give them closure. Like there was just never like an official ending. It was just always kind of like, well, maybe, okay, I'll see you again in another year. You know, <laughs> like, so what's, what else do we need to know about this? Stagnation, complacency, true love, potential life partner, love offer, commitment. Okay, so take this if it resonates. Like, it's either your story or it isn't. Um, you know, trust your own intuition. Like, if you feel like this past person is a, is a potential life partner, then trust that. Like, if your intuition says that that's the one, then trust that. But for most of you, I'm feeling like that person's not the one. I feel like that person's actually been keeping you from the one. Like, I just feel like they've been keeping you kind of stagnant here. And, like, you have another potential life partner that's, like, in your energy field. I don't even know if you've met them yet. But it's almost like this, like, narcissistic ex wants to, like... It's like they like the idea of you, but they don't actually... It's like they, they like the potential. It's like there's potential there. It's not... How do I explain that? They like the potential. They like what it could be. They like the, the image. This person's all about the aesthetic. They're all about the, the public image. They, they like what it... It's like they just... They like the idea of you. That they fail to handle the actuality of you. You know, it's like this person makes you this love offer, but it's almost like for publicity's sake. Like they're using you to make somebody else jealous or like they just want to um have that appearance of a relationship or like they see you making these posts on social media so they want that connection but it's almost like it's like someone that like wants a wedding but not a marriage you know what I mean like they they want the fun part of it they want you know they want a certain energy but they they don't want all of it you know what I mean like they don't they just want the wedding but not the marriage it's kind of en the energy I get here you know, that's maybe not even a wedding quite yet. You might not be there, but it's just that type of energy where it's like they just, you know, they don't want you as a whole. They just want, it's like certain aspects of you they love, but certain aspects of you they don't resonate with. And they just kind of brush them under the rug. So it's not really a stable connection. I'm feeling, I'm feeling like some of you did a binding spell on this person. I really do. I feel like for some there was witchcraft involved here. And you need to unbind them because this isn't your person. I think that you kind of know that. I think some of you are like, you keep seeing this person come back around. So some of you are like, well, maybe this is my true love. But they're honestly just coming back around and giving you these roses here. You know, we see a lot of roses right here. I see a rose up here too. <laughs> Something with roses. You know, a lot of them are just coming back around because they're bound to you. Because energetically, it's like there's like a soul contract or there's a binding spell or there's there wasn't closure with this person. There wasn't an ending. You guys didn't do a cut and clear ritual on each other after the connection ended. So it's like this loop, this karmic cycle, this keeps coming back around. And um, I just don't feel like this person loves you as a whole. It's like there might have been something wrong and you could have couldn't put your finger on it because it's like they love certain things about you, but then other things that are that, that are about you, like they kind of try to downplay those things and they just don't accept those things about you. Like maybe they don't like the witchcraft or something, for example, for those that are witches. You know, they don't like your religion or they don't like your parents or don't like this or that. It's like there's incompatibilities and you guys just kind of sweep them under the rug is what I'm feeling. Or you guys have like different love languages or something of that nature. So yeah, this person needs to be cut and cleared or there needs to be closure. There needs to be an unbinding ritual done if you bound this person. Some of you have an object, like an old picture of the two of you or like a stuffed animal or something that they made you that you need to burn. Um, this person needs to be released. They need, you know, the cut and clear ritual, all that needs to happen for your actual true love to come back around because it's like you're holding on to someone that just doesn't really love you for who you are. They love you for who you could be. They really love certain things about you, but there's other things that are just not compatible with who they are. You know, there's just too much miscommunication, too many personality differences here. 
Um, and, and like I said, I feel like they're, they're keeping you from your actual true love. I feel like once this is released, your spirit guides have this room to bring you this new person. But, you know, they don't want to bring somebody in and have you break their heart by choosing this narcissist over this new person. So, you know, your spirit guides are, are looking out for this, this new person's best interest as well. They don't want to, you know what I mean? Like, if they don't want them to come in and be friend zone because you're still attached to this, this whole energy. You know what I mean? This, this old energy needs to be cleared so new energy can come in. Yeah, this new person would be loyal to you. And they could come in quickly, I feel like, once you clear this old energy up. Because there's just anger and miscommunication with this old person. But it's, like, familiar to you. It's familiar to them. It's, like, you guys have known each other. I feel like this is someone you've known for most of you. I feel like this is probably someone you've known for years. Like, this is probably one of those connections where it's, like, you go months or even years without talking and they pop back up and you guys just pick up, like, you know, like, just... Like, you guys haven't been away from each other for a whole year. And you just pick back up, and then it's the same issues over and over again for a few months, and you break up, and then it's like, okay, see you next year. Like, you know, like, just, it's like this repeating cycle that needs to be wrapped up. I'm hearing Take Me to Church by Hoiser. Hoiser? I don't know how to say his name. Or that band's name, I'm sorry. But I'm hearing that song. I don't know what that's about. Third party power struggle. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like this person's like a karmic person, a karmic partner. I feel like there's like a power struggle that you guys had together. Okay. I don't know why I made that sound. Yeah, codependency. It's like you guys have been codependent on each other. You've been in this power struggle, trying to like dominate or control each other, trying to one up each other, trying to. It's like almost like you don't want to give them closure and they don't want to give you closure. It's like a very codependent connection where it's like you guys are both kind of tired of each other, but like you don't want to close it out because it's like you guys come back to each other when you're lonely or bored or whatever. It's like you guys, it's like you, it's like a love hate relationship almost. Like you guys still have this love for each other, but at the same time, it's like. It's just stagnant. It's just like this repeating karmic cycle and it needs to be wrapped up because this person is keeping you from your actual true love. Someone that would actually make you happy and love all of you, you know? Some of you, it's like you can't put your finger on, like some of you had arguments with this person and you can't put your finger on why you guys argued so much. And if this is your reading, you know, send me an email. I can do a private reading for you. My email is dragonenchantress at AOL.com. My email is right below in the description box below this video. So you can just copy and paste that email. My donation links are below. Donations are really appreciated. Um, please comment, like, share, subscribe. Um, I really appreciate you guys. But anyway, what I was, what I was saying is... It's just, it's codependent. Um, some of you could not put your finger on, like, why things felt so off. You're like, why do we keep arguing? Why why can't we just get it right? Like, what do we need to do? Do we need to get counseling? Like, what, why? Like, we have love for each other, but it's, it's like, some of them, like, some of you guys, like I said, it's just a karmic cycle, or it's like a binding spell or something. Maybe they did a binding spell on you, and you need to end that binding spell. You need to uncross yourself and also do like a cut and clear ritual and do what you need to do to end that binding spell for some. For some, it's like you need closure. Like you need to straight up tell this person your peace, like speak your peace without worrying about their reaction. Just speak it because it's time to end it. It's a time, time to move forward towards your actual true love. Um, but some of you, like I said, that's like you had arguments and you couldn't put your finger on it. Some, it's because of a binding spell. There's like resentment there. Because if you do love spells on someone, like, okay, like, reconciliation, I think, is fine for the most part. Or, like, doing, like, love drawing spells, like, trying to do spells to get someone back. But if you do a love spell on someone that's, like, not feeling you or they're kind of getting over you. Um, and this is just for a few of you. I know not all of you did this. But when you do, like, a love spell on someone, it's, like, eventually they have, like, a resentment towards you because they feel that their free will has been broken. They feel that, and I'm not Wiccan. I'm not preaching the threefold law or anything like that. I'm just saying with witchcraft, it's like you have to work with the energy that's there. So like with reconciliation, it's like you're still taking like the love that's there and you're working with that energy or like love drawing. You're just drawing in the people that love you and that are capable of having a relationship with you. But when you do like an actual love spell on someone that's like not that invested in you, 
then it's almost like trapping the person in a way. It's like they're it's like they're just they're still not they're going to feel obsessed with you. They're going to feel codependent on you. You know, they're going to be attached to you, but they're not really going to love you for you. Like those issues are still going to be there. And on some level, they're going to have like a resentment because they're going to feel like they're off their destined path. Like this is a karmic partnership. This is not someone that you were meant to be with. And I think you're recognizing that too now. I think at first, like if you did a love, if you did like a love spell on them, I think now you're recognizing too, like, oh damn, I shouldn't have done that. This isn't actually my person. In the moment you were in so much pain that you did it because you didn't want to lose them. But now you're looking back and you're like, oh shit, this really was a karmic partner. Like, I, I don't want this either, you know, but it keeps coming back around. So that, that needs to be ended. Like I said, for some, they did, they did the love spell on you and that's that energy. You're feeling like, why do I keep thinking about this person? Well, it's because it's they're doing that witchcraft. Um, but I mean, it can, you know, don't be afraid. Don't give it, don't feed it with fear. It's something that you can end. It's something that you can, you can do the cut and clear rituals. You can uncross yourself. You can, you can do what you need to do to get rid of this. Um, for others, like I said, it's like an object you need to burn or it's just, just closure, like a karmic cycle that just needs to be wrapped up. Like you need to learn the karmic lesson. Finally, wrap this cycle up with like the world card is what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing the world card. I'm seeing the judgment card and I'm seeing justice. Those three cards together, the world judgment justice. Okay. Um, but yeah, whatever it is, I mean, there's a few different stories here, but whatever it is, this, this chapter needs to close out so that your actual true love can come forward to you. And some of you, like for some, the resentment was based on a love spell. That's why they had that resentment and anger towards you and the arguments and all that. For others, I feel like they just, they just can't love you for who you are. And it's like, don't take that personally. They're just not your person. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that you're bad or that they're bad. It's just, it's just a karmic. It's just not your true love. You know what I mean? Like the right person is going to love you just as you are. You're, they're going to love your body shape. They're going to love your weight. They're going to love your, how you dress, how you do your makeup. Um, they're going to love your style. They're going to love your personality. They're going to love that you're a witch. If you're a witch, they're going to love, you know what I mean? Like the right person for you is going to love you. You're not going to have to push them or force them or to con or convince them to love those things about you. They're just naturally going to love those things already. It's just going to resonate with them because they're a soulmate or a twin flame. You feel me? But with the karmic, it's like, they're not going to like those things about you. Like this karmic loves certain things about you, but I'm getting that there's certain things about you that drive them crazy that they don't like, like they want to fix you or they want to change you. They want you to be somebody else. And that's, I know it hurts, but it's not going to change. They're going to continue to be like that, especially being as narcissistic as they are. And that doesn't say anything bad about you. It doesn't mean anything bad about you at all. It's possible that this person is a complete muggle and you're a magical, amazing, powerful witch. And this person is just boring and basic. You know what I mean? Like, so why would you want that? You know, them trying to change you isn't an insult to you. It could be very well an insult to them. Like, maybe you're just too good. Like, you're too too much for them or too good for them. It's like they just don't resonate with your energy. So why waste your time? You know, find someone that does resonate with your energy. Um, and I feel like sometimes I feel like it's almost like a very toxic codependent connection because sometimes they go back and forth where they'll praise certain qualities because you do have qualities that they love. But then like with qualities that they don't like, it's like they try to ignore them or brush them under the rug or try to get you to change them. And you're just like, oh, like, I don't want to go to church or I don't want to to be your friends with your parents or I don't want to do it's like you guys just have like these incompatibilities and it's like okay I'm saying like maybe like someone that's like Christian and someone like that's pagan and it's like you guys are trying to change each other and it's like it's a karmic cycle like and it doesn't mean like you could be Christian and be with a pagan you totally can but in this compl in this scenario right here I'm feeling like probably not so much because they want to change you that's the thing like if they were Christian, they just accepted that you were pagan, that'd be totally fine. But they don't accept it. They pretend like they accept it, but they think that they can change it and they can manipulate you and eventually you'll see the light. Because I'm getting for some, not for everybody here, but for a few of you, there's some religious differences. Um, or like family, like society, like maybe like, maybe even like conservative and liberal or things like that. Um, like political difference, like, like different views on COVID, like that kind of stuff, you know, um, or just like personality differences. Like they like certain things about you, but then it's almost like they expect you to not be diverse. They expect you to like sit in like a certain role. 
it kind of really reminds me of my military ex-boyfriend because I had like an ex-boyfriend who like you know, just using my story as an example, because this energy, like, he's coming up. Like, this energy is reminding me of what I went through. You know, I'm I'm long over him. This was years ago. I don't give a shit about him. But it's similar energy where, you know, he was military and he was very, he was way too conservative for me. Um, and, like, he liked when I would do little housewifey stuff. Like, when I would cook food and, and do the dishes and, like, surprise him and, and dress up for him. Like, he loved that stuff. But when he saw my fiery, outspoken, assertive side, when he saw my more masculine energy, he didn't like it. And he wanted me to shut up and just sit there and look pretty. So, you know, we ended up getting into a power struggle and it just didn't work because he just wanted me to be a certain way. And I'm getting that you are magical and you are diverse and unique and you have all these different aspects of your personality. And this person is, has been trying to get you to be just one certain way. You know, it's like, no, you're masculine and you're feminine. You're sweet and kind and also outspoken and adventurous. Like, you you can be all these things. You can be diverse. It's, it's not fake to be diverse. You can dress gothic one day and wear a, a floral summer dress the next day. It's, it's up to you. You know what I mean? It's your life. Live it the way that you want. Because so I'm just getting the energy of someone that just wants to change you and they want you to be a certain way. And um, you're just too diverse for that. Your energy is too strong and too magical for that. You know what I mean? Like you need to accept and embrace all of all of yourself. You can't suppress yourself or change your personality for this person. You know, it's time to let this energy go. Whether this is someone you're currently with or a past person, you know, they're blocking you from your true love. They're blocking you from the man or woman that would accept you, that would love you. For some, this might be someone that's transgender and they're not accepting that you're transgender or they don't know that you're transgender or something of that sort. Like they don't, it's like there's something they don't know about you or something and you know they wouldn't accept it. And the fact that they wouldn't accept it shows you that it's not your person. You know what I mean? It's a karmic. So whatever the story is here, I mean, whatever the situation, it's like it's it's time to clear it up so you can find that person that will love you and accept you for you. You know, if you are flamboyant and, and out there and adventurous and, you know, you're a stripper and you like to party every weekend, there's going to be some a soulmate out there for you that resonates with that. You feel me? It's like the, the right person is going to resonate with that energy they're gonna you know what i mean like they're gonna understand you but i do feel like this person is gonna rush in and give you some kind of apology love offer but it's just the same cycle wanting to repeat they feel there's it's this it's this power struggle look at the car look at the karmic cycles you guys keep repeating with this person where either you're chasing them and they're running or they're chasing you and you're running that kind of energy and now you're the one focusing on yourself and other things and they're you switched it up on this then this time around. You weren't as codependent. You kind of took your energy back. You're like, I'm sick of this cycle. You know, you tried to break free of it. And, and you kind of are breaking free of it. But but again, there's something else that needs to be cleared up, like an object that needs to be burned or a spell that needs to be done or something of that sort. Um, so yeah, move, move past this energy because don't get caught in this cycle anymore because you have a true love that wants to come in. Yeah, end this pattern or cycle, breakthrough, freedom, dream, listening to your dreams, your visions, telepathically communicating with this new person, you know, don't give in to the loneliness, don't give in to the isolation and emptiness, you know what I mean, the cycle needs to end, I know it hurts, you're nostalgic, but you know what, you can have that adventure, that honeymoon and vacation and everything you want with somebody new, it's almost like you guys just got tired of being alone, and so you just kind of like, it's like you want them to be someone else and they want you to be somebody else. So it's it's like it's way past time to clear this up and find your actual true love and don't settle for anything less than that. Because you do have someone that's waiting to come in, but they I feel like they just can't until this cycle is cleared. And, and it's up to you. The ball is in your court. You have to take action to clear this cycle. So I hope that makes sense. Like I said, if you want a private reading, my email is below in the description box below this video, dragonenchantress at AOL.com. Donations are appreciated. Please like, share, subscribe. Maybe someone on like Facebook or Instagram or wherever needs to see these messages too. So please share me out. Um, thanks for watching.